Good morning or good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm aware that we have uh, some participants following this session online. Thank you for your presence. So for the second part of uh, our morning, we'll be discussing bridging the gender gap, inspiring women to lead in tech. I have a wonderful uh, panel of speakers today. So thank you for your presence. I would like also to take a moment to recognize uh, the chair of the network of women in ITUT, who is following this session online from Tunisia. So before we start, let's talk about the key objectives of this session, as well as the context. For that, I'll give you a statistic. One out of four participants in this uh, meeting this morning is a woman, actually. So this session aims to uh, provide leadership insights for women in the European digital landscape and offer re uh, recommendations as well for those wishing to embark uh, in a career in technology and ICT and standardization. So we will spotlight some successful case studies at the national level that can help inspire you in your own country to also lead some gender equality programs aimed at inspiring other women to lead in uh, the technology sector. We also cover the challenges and uh, the main barriers preventing women from um, obtaining uh, leadership positions. And then, um, this wonderful panel will offer their personal insights as well, uh, tips uh, aiming at encouraging uh, girls. We have actually uh, um, a youth representative with us as well. So with that, I just touch upon uh, ITU's uh, commitment to empowering women and girls in ICT. As you may be aware, we have several initiatives in this respect, such as the Network of Women, the Girls in ICT Day, and uh, also the program Her Cyber Tracks um, Capacity Building uh, Program, and we uh, recognize uh, Germany's contribution, uh, generous contribution to this program. This is only to cite a few. This discussion is particularly important as we prepare for the World Telecommunication Standardization Assembly held, being held in October this year uh, in India. And uh, with reference to the latest campaign that TSB director has launched at last TSAG, which aims to promote more women in leadership positions. So calling up upon the member states to appoint uh, more women as a chair, vice chair of the various study groups, TSAG and so on. So I would like to just take a moment to show one slide, if I can ask my colleague, which outlines the objectives of the Network of Women for WTSA campaign, encouraging the ITU community to promote the engagement of women in leadership roles. So we will come back to this a bit later. So I'm pleased to be your moderator today. We will first start with a a round of statements, and then we will uh, dive into some uh, questions. Uh, then we will uh, conclude with a QA and A. So I invite you, the audience here in presence, in the beautiful city of Blankst, and online, to think of some questions that you would like to ask, and then we'll wrap it up. So, without further ado, let me introduce our distinguished uh, panelist today. I will first start with Ms. Isabella Egluska, who is Minister Advisor at Ministry of Digital Affairs in Poland, our host today, and uh, ask you for a three minute statement uh, in relation to the subject at hand. Isabella, over to you. Thank you, Charlene. First of all, uh, welcome in Dansk. I hope you have fruitful, fruitful discussions and you enjoy your stay in our beautiful city. And then back to the topic. Um, when I was preparing to this panel, um, 
I try to stay close to the WTCA 24 uh, aims, kindly requested, uh, instructed by Charlene, um, the, the goals that uh, were shown just a minute ago. And then I asked myself, um, what should really happen to achieve uh, them having in mind uh, my own country? Because I think it all starts um, with our small plot of land and finally goes uh, gets bigger to bring us together to connect our common goals and visions. So I thought that in terms of such um, great events like, for instance, ITU summits, w, um, uh, WRC or WTCA. Somebody tries to interrupt us. <laughs> there I won't give up, okay. Sorry. Sorry for that. Um okay. So in terms of uh, this this great events I mentioned, uh, the ITU summits, uh every administration preparing uh, for participation uh, in them, should take into account the domestic uh, determinants uh, in the sphere of gender equality. In other words, every administration should first establish such a policy and then follow its guidelines. So in my opinion, what we have to do is to strongly and continuously uh, encourage or even push uh, our political decision makers to include that aspect uh, in the strategic programs of development, uh, either at the central level or at the ministerial or agency level, ideally both. And having this proper basis for taking uh, further steps, I believe that the administrations being more aware of the necessity to act on it will also be more willing to engage uh, women, for instance, in different preparation studies, drafting contributions, and uh, nominate them to leadership positions or as head of delegations. Of course, this all has to stem from a uh, wider political process. Um, of engaging more women in ICT sector as we speak about this specific era. So I imagine all activities need to be coherent at all levels, um, social, educational, uh, local and governmental. And we need to invite uh, widest possible range of uh, relevant stakeholders uh, when preparing the gender policy for ICT. Uh, share best practices, uh, support social partners, listen to private companies, uh, representatives. And I think we can learn from each other in so many different ways. And hope I will have a chance to later talk on the, um, some specific impactful actions um, that could be helpful when inspiring each other. Thank you. Thank you very much, Isabella, for sharing already some recommendation uh, at uh, the strategic level. Now, I would like to turn to Ms. Susanna Matson, Sweden's Councillor and Deputy Director at the Ministry of Finance of Sweden. Uh, Sweden is known to be also leading in terms of gender equality, so please share, share your views on the topic at hand with us. Thank you very much. Sorry, <laughs> it works, yeah. Uh, so I work for the Swedish government and I will have um, taken more, I think a broader perspective on this uh, issue or uh, societal issue with uh, the gender gap than just uh, speak about it isolated to the ICT sector and the engagement of women in um, in the WGTSA and in the ITU, in ITU. So bridging the gender gap is indeed a very important societal issue that the Swedish government prioritizes. The 
overarching objective of Swedish gender equality policy is that women and men should have the same power to shape society and their lives. We do, as Charlene has uh, pointed out, that we have a relatively high degree of gender equality in Sweden, and it derives actually from decades of political will to achieve gender equality, to take the necessary political decisions and to build an infrastructure for gender equality. So in many ways, Sweden is a very gender equal society. Recently, the European Institute for Gender Equality presented an index in which Sweden ranked as the most gender equal country in Europe. But nevertheless, we do have a problem with big inequalities in the Swedish labor market, uh, which is to a relatively high degree gender segregated, which uh, might come as a surprise to many people. And it's also true about uh, there's a gender inequality in the IT ICT sector, although we have a very high degree of women students at the um, colleges for, for IT, uh, for tech sector. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, that we do have a gender segregated uh, labor market, it of course mirrors the career and educational choices that girls and women and boys and men do in Sweden, in the secondary school at the university. And I might say, say that uh, in almost all countries across the world. But we do have a Swedish parliament that has uh, set the clear goal that Sweden should be one of the world's foremost knowledge and research centers. And to counteract the gender stereotyped career and educational choices is part of this uh, high priority for the Swedish government. To quote the Minister of Education, the way to achieve this goal is to encourage more young girls to see an allure, to see the allure of mathematics, technology, and science from an early age. Uh, it's very important with female role models in academia and to create more equal conditions in academia, for example, in terms of research resources and working condition. Female role models are needed at all levels as a student, as teachers, as researchers, and as professors. And this is also why one of the reasons why it's very important, I think, with this, uh, this network for women, uh, both in the ITUT sector, it's very important that we now have a uh, secretary general that is a, a woman. Um, and I think we need to have female role models all over the place in ITU and in the rest of society in order to change this gender inequality in equal situation that we are facing and that we must come over soon. Um, so this is my uh, statement for the first part of this. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Susanna, for also highlighting the importance of the political will. And we will uh, cover as well the challenges in the labor market in Sweden. And you will enlighten us about what you believe are the main barriers. Now, I would like to turn over to Ms. Xenia Podbechan, Secretary at the Ministry of Digital Transformation in Slovenia. For your information, the Ministry of Digital Transformation in Slovenia is led by women. So, Xenia, over to you for a statement. Thank you, Charlene. Um, uh, nowadays, the world is changing at the lightning speed and digital technologies have transformed the way we communicate, learn, work and do the business. Uh, they have also demanded from us to create new solutions to address some of the world's most pressing challenges that we face nowadays. To achieve that, all members of the society should be equally included in digital transformation and no one should be left behind. The entire industry in the field of information and communication technologies is facing a lack of trained staff and with the rapid pace of the development of, digit, of modern digital technologies, the need for ICT experts is also increasing. The proportion of women working in the field of ICT is too low, which is unacceptable both in terms of gender equality and from the point of view of unused opportunities. Slovenia strives for, greater, for, for, grand, for gender equality and improving the situation and strengthening the role of women in political, economic, civil, social, cultural, and other fields. 
At our ministry, as also Charlene said, uh, there is a great share of women and women on leading positions, and it's above the average in the government. In Slovenia, digital transformation is a priority, and we are investing in public policies that stress the importance of technology and digital literacy for society. One of the solutions to reduce the digital gender gap is to ensure access to digital technologies and education about their use for girls and women. Our share of women in ICT in Slovenia is 17%. And that's why one of the main goals of the strategy Digital Slovenia 2030 is to reduce the difference, differences between the share of men and women in the field of ICT. The goal is that by 2030, the share of women among employed ICT professions, professionals will be 25%. In Slovenia, we strive to reduce the digital divide, improve digital competencies, and increase digital inclusion through the implementation of gender-sensitive strategies, such as raising awareness, education and training, mentorship, promotion activities, and networking to narrow the gender gap, danger, uh, gen, gender digital gap. Among the numerous measures of the ministry, which raises digital competencies between the population and decrease digital involvement, such as training for children, adolescents and adults, mobile heroes for age of 50, 55, we pay special attention to encouraging young people, especially girls and women, to pursue ICT education and careers so they can contribute to the sector's growth, which is, in turn can lead to the economic empowerment of women. According to the Women in Digital Scoreboard Indicator, Slovenia is below the EU average, which is the reason why we are trying to address this issue comprehensively and with, with a systemic approach, starting at the early age with the education of girls, continuing through primary and secondary schooling, and also through encouragement for lifelong learning, retraining, and upskilling during working period. Through projects, we strive to encourage more girls and women to pursue careers in ICT and provide them with the support and resources they need to succeed. And at the same time, we strive to create an environment that fosters the advancement of women into leadership position, positions within the ICT sector where women are not only participants, but also leaders. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Xenia, for sharing uh, your country's ambitions for gender equality. And we'll be looking forward to hearing more about a successful case study, implementation case study. Now, let me turn to uh, Ms. Zina Bumblakova from Czech Republic, Ministry of Industry and Trade, for a statement on this important topic. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Charlene. Good morning, everybody. Uh, maybe I will bring a bit different um, perspective to, to this uh, discussion and maybe more uh, personal experience because uh, when I was asked to, to participate in this discussion, I was quite surprised because I'm not dealing with gender gap issues at all. And uh, soon I realized that I am because I am a woman and I am involved in technology questions. So I started uh, asking myself what to say here. And I soon realized that maybe I can be personally uh, one of the good example of solving this gender gap problem. And also uh, I realized that I'm super lucky because I'm part of the team uh, who started a great project last year in Czechia project which is uh, completely bottom-up and uh, women-led and it is uh, the Internet Governance Forum Czechia and and uh, this uh, I would like to tell you more about later. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Zina. We look forward to hearing uh, more about how women led the IGF to inspire other countries. And now let me turn to Miss Emilia Zaluska, who is our youth representative, Alumna Youth Envoy ITU Generation Connect Europe. Emilia, Emilia please share your, your thoughts with us. Uh, thank you very much. And first of all, thank you very much for having me here. It is an honor uh, <clears throat> to represent youth here and also, I think, kind of an obligation. Uh, as you can see on the slide, uh, I also work for the National Research Institute NASC, but here I was invited, I think, more in a personal capacity. So I will, as Zina, I will share it more from my 
personal experience than any country or, or organizational level. So the gender gap is real. Uh, we can see it here. We can see it, uh, as Charlene mentioned, in the ratio one women for men. Uh, one of my main fields uh, is cybersecurity. I attend a lot of cybersecurity events, and as you can imagine, there are not so many women there. So there must be a reason for that. It's then it's not coming out of nowhere. So so yeah. So so there's a problem. And what I can share from my personal experience is what I also could observe really helps to build communities that support women are youth directed programs. I had the pleasure to be a part of Generation Connect, uh, which was led by the ITU. It was a wonderful program with a very, which built a very supportive community with, and a lot of friendships. And also it helped us uh, to get more empowered and feel more confident because it is really difficult for young people when they enter professional uh, environments uh, and I think that for young women, it is even more difficult. It is very easy to um, start feeling uh, not uh, self-confident, to feel a bit patronized by some people. Uh, so possibility to attend such programs as the Generation Connect, but also many other programs I had opportunity to be part of. Uh, I am quite active in the internet governance and there's a lot of youth directed capacity building programs also there. I also co-founded my own uh, initiative, Youth IGF Poland, and we had a, a youth capacity building program. Uh, they are the way in which also young women, but not only them, all young participants, can have an easier entry, especially if they are mentored by the more experienced people. Uh, they have, as Suzanne uh, mentioned, uh, they can have role models, women, already successful women role models. It can really make an easier entrance point for them into the professional community. So if your organization and or company doesn't have youth program, it is not so good. Like, having internship programs is not enough because if interns are there just by themselves, they don't get much opportunities, they are not mentored, they will do their work, but it won't make them easier for them, especially for women to become more self-confident, to, uh, to become more equipped in different skills that would be helpful for them to pursue their career. So internships programs just like that are not enough. What is needed is capacity building programs with mentors, with people who actually care for the youth. Uh, I think it is super important if there are also women, uh, the already successful women guiding the girls because their experience is different. They had to go through other barriers than their male colleagues. So they know how to they know what young girls might be dealing with. So if you don't have such programs, it would be really worth implementing them. I think you can ask Yaroslav. <laughs> he can uh, point you the people who are in charge uh, of their youth programs. Uh, you can ask me. Uh, you can ask uh, other people who are active in the IGF community, as Zina. Uh, who already have a lot of experience uh, and who also have the willingness to empower young people and not to only, uh, you know, hire them and letting them be, but also mentoring them and guiding them because this is what is very important, especially for young girls for whom it is might be very overwhelming to start their career in tech when they mostly see males. Thank you very much, Emilia, for highlighting the importance of building a supportive community. And this is what uh, the Network of Women of ITU aims to do. Um, so we'll come back to that a little later. Now, 
I would like to proceed to the first round of questions that will aim to highlight the success uh, stories uh, at the national level or at the personal level. So I would first like to ask uh, Isabella to share with us uh, what has uh, Pauline done to, um, to inspire women to lead in the tech industry and uh, other projects that have been successful in this regard. Isabella, over to you, please. Thank you, Charlene. Um, yes, uh, I will do present some actions that are taking place in my domestic ministry, which is Ministry of Digital Affairs. Um, the ones I consider to be useful, future-oriented, um, somehow bring hope that the situation will change uh, for better. But I will start by recalling the uh, Eurostat research, uh, according to which in 2022, the share of women among ICT specialists uh, in Poland was 16,7%, which is, I guess, similar to the level of, the, of specialists in Slovenia. And in the EU, um, the share is uh, nearly 19%. And I believe these kind of sad statistics uh, brought our minister and Deputy Prime Minister Gavkowski to organize a ministerial roundtable uh, on the increase of percentage of women in ICT sector. And this took place only a month ago. One could say better late than never. But um, by gathering representatives of public administration, private sector and uh, NGOs, it was possible to present a number of legislative and non-legislative proposals. Uh, the ones that are to help implementing the so-called digital competence um, development program. This program was established in a ministry some time ago and uh, among others, it provides that in 2030, women will constitute 29% among ICT specialists. And I guess um, to support achieving this goal, I mean, to, to help women be more professionally engaged um, in ICT sector, the ministry launched uh, a one and a half million euros training program called Become a Digital Expert Lady. And uh, the NGOs and different associations had a chance to the end of March this year to apply for financing uh, of projects offering specialized ICT training for women in programming, uh, AI, big data, cybersecurity, systems analytics, and so on. And the trainings will start on the beginning of July this year. And um, having said about the, the governmental initiatives, I would like to mention one event uh, organized by coalition of private companies uh, under, under the auspices of the Ministry of Digital Affairs and local government authorities, which is Women in Tech Summit. And it's the biggest conference and career fairs for women in tech in Europe. Mm, and it takes place uh, every year in Warsaw this year on the 12th and 13th of June. So I invite you all to take part in, part in it. And this summit is um, a perfect place for young women uh, to, like the one woman who are at the threshold of their uh, professional life, and uh, who want to define their career paths, uh, set new goals, and just want to learn from the best experts uh, in the industry. And the career expert with over 100 booths of the innovative global companies, telco, uh, digital software companies, give, um, give the chance to meet experts and discuss, for instance, CV, with them, learn about their recru recruitment procedures, obtain valuable tips and advice. So I think it's a quite practical and useful woman for help um, 
uh, yeah, yeah, to help women in ICT sector. That's all for me. Thanks. Thank you, Isabella. It's uh, quite inspiring to hear about uh, Poland's uh, gender mainstreaming uh, measures and such as capacity building and also those targeted, um, you know, uh, initiatives such as the Women in Tech Summit and so on. Now I'd like to uh, turn over to uh, Ms. Susanna from, from Sweden to share with us also Sweden's experience and efforts in promoting gender equality at the national level and for bringing more young girls, women into STEMs, please. Thank you, Charlene. And I think I forgot the first, at my first statement to thank you for inviting me <laughs> and also thank uh, Yaroslav and everyone who has organized this event because it's, it's, it is really important to have these kind of talks. Um, so my perspective is what governments can do. So I will take some examples from initiatives that the Swedish government has taken. But of course, it's it's so important also to say that <clears throat> it's not governments that will do everything uh, or can do everything. It's it's the civil society. It's all parts of society. It's it's industry. It's um, educational levels and so on. So, but um, schools do play a crucial role in laying the foundation for gender equal society and combating tra ge traditional gender roles and gender equal in education encompasses the entire formal education system ranging from preschool to adult education, vocational colleges, universities and colleges. One of the goals of the Swedish government's gender equality policy concerns ensuring that women and men have equal opportunities and conditions regarding the education, the choice of study and their personal development. So we have an um, agency in Sweden called the Gender Equality Agency that has been commissioned to conduct an, an analysis of the gender segregated labor market and develop proposals to counteract gender-based study and career choices. So I think this mapping exercise is really important to, to do in order to come up with uh, good proposals on how to change situation. And this, uh, the Swedish Gender Equality Agency also has an ongoing task to support, to give support to state universities and colleges in their work with gender mainstreaming. And this work will contribute to achieve the gender equality policy goals, for example, in terms of equal opportunities for career paths and gender-based studies. Since many years, there, has, there is an internship program where Swedish collab industry collaborates with the Swedish government. It's a four-month paid internship, and the aim of it is to inspire young people to pursue higher technical education and provide a clear vision of what awaits after their studies. For the next coming years, uh, there will be a special focus on encouraging uh, women to participate in the internship pro program. And by autumn 2024, which is quite close now, the Swedish government intends to present the STEM strategy that covers the whole of the educational system from kindergarten to postgraduate education. And a particular focus in this uh, STEM strategy will be to uh, address the question on how to, how to increase the proportion of women in STEM programs and to increase the pass rate of women. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Susanna. I, um, I take note of your uh, you know, recommendation uh, to uh, question the traditional gender roles. And it is indeed very interesting to hear that Sweden has a program, uh, a STEM strategy. I hope that inspires you all. Now, going on to uh, Ms. Xenia from Slovenia, could you please share with us uh, some uh, successful case study in your country? Yes, thank, thank you. you. Uh, I will present today the project pilot trainings for women in ICT. It was financed by the Ministry of Digital Transformation of Republic of Slovenia, and the duration of the project was from September through December 2023. Uh, uh, and the, the target group were women over the age of 18. And the aim of the trainings was uh, increase the share of women among ICT employees, raise
No. You don't need Anytime. the side. Okay. No need. Yes. Thank you. I, yeah. So the aim of the trainings were uh, increased the share of women among ICT employees, raise digital literacy, encourage uh, gr uh, greater interest of women and girls in ICT professions, reduce gender gaps in the field and change gender stereotypes and social beliefs about the correlation between the female gender and technologies. Um, the, the trainings were, um, during the trainings uh, period, uh, there were 23 short and in-depth trainings organized on the topic of uh, cybersecurity, data analysis, IT support, IT project management, artificial intelligence, and also user experience. Uh, with an emphasis on developing key ICT skills and promoting women self-confidence in ICT sector. Um, 513 participants successfully completed the training and uh, there were also seven events held to support the trainings on topics such as job is looking for me, education and certification, women in ICT, challenges and opportunities. Uh, there were also uh, two visits to two tech companies. And then the final event uh, with the awarding of a certification for the participants that take place. The aim of these uh, supporting trainings uh, was to of connecting, networking, and discovering the potential of women in ICT and uh, were attended by a total of 277 participants. And the project attracted a wide range of female participants uh, with different backgrounds and levels of experience in ICT. The participants were uh, of different ages from different professions and covered a wide range of ICT skills. The achievements achieved through this project um, not only strengthen and develop the individual ICT competencies of the participants, but also contribute to greater diversity and gender equality in the ICT professional environment. And the pilot uh, project provides uh, a solid foundation for the further efforts in ICT for girls and young women. Together, we have created a solid foundation on which we will continue to build uh, an inclusive, diverse and innovative, innovative ICT sector. And I will just mention uh, only four, uh, four of the um, projects that we also have. We have many projects uh, in encouraging young women and um, girls and also, of course, youth uh, projects. Um, and they are the Girls of Code project, uh, where we offer uh, girls from age uh, 10 to 11 for participating in elementary schools, free learnings of the basics of programming and log logical thinking. Then we have the initiative, we will be engineers. And uh, the purpose of this project is to promote engineering, technological and natural uh, science professions and innovation among students of leading Slovenian high schools. Um, and this is for both women, uh, girls and men uh, and boys. And uh, then we have Spark DG Girls Project. This is only for girls um, that aims to encourage girls to explore digital technologies such as uh, uh, AR, VR, uh, AI and uh, uh, many others. And then we also have the holiday week uh, that is during the summer holidays. Um, it's the project to strengthen and develop girls' digital competencies through a series of free workshops on pro prototyping, programming, online safety, um, and the use of var various digital tools. The girls, um, the girls uh, acquire basic knowledge in, in computing and uh, informatics and strengthen the digital competencies. And these are some of them that we are doing. So there are many more. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Xenia. It's very inspiring to hear of so many initiatives uh, at the government level in Slovenia, uh, aiming to encourage uh, young women or our future standards engineers as well to uh, join into the STEM Fantastic. So now I would like to turn over uh, Zina to share some experience about the successful women-led IGF in the Czech Republic. Over to you, Xenia. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, as you as you may know, there are uh, many national IGF initiatives around the globe, and uh, I think that uh, the Czech one is quite special because uh, <clears throat> uh, it happened. Um, uh, last year at Hamburg at ICANN meeting when we had some 
a chat with my friends and we are discussing how to how to foster how to promote some uh, cooperation and discussion about internet governance issues in the Czech Republic and and, and the youngest one of us the, Nat Natalia came up with the idea about founding the IGF Czechia and uh, yeah it seemed a very logical step and uh, we did it and if I say we it means uh, for uh, women uh, Natalia from Academy, uh, Regina from Technical Community, Selma from Civil Society, and uh, me representing government. Uh, and uh, yeah, it is uh, working now for some six months, and we are um, uh, organizing uh, events like uh, I, uh, Girls in ICT Day, and uh, they are running programs uh, that. Uh, we are organizing workshops uh, at schools for uh, teenage students on internet governance issues, and they seem really very interested. Uh, we are now um, planning uh, first big offline offline event in September twenty four, and um, yeah, so we we just decided to to, to join the forces, and uh, it uh, it works. Um, uh, I'm really very happy for it, and I want to mention some some special sentiment that I feel or dynamic in in the group, um, which is maybe caused by the fact that we are all women. Um, for me personally, it is a great pleasure to be there because um, uh, I'm seeing every day um, how technologies impact my children, for example. Uh, their life, uh, their, me their mental health, and so on. And I tend to uh, deal with this issue also at work, quite naturally. And uh, it's a great pleasure for me to, to be part of, of this team. Uh, and I think that uh, the focus on youth, on education, on girls, on mental health, and, and things related to the technologies and to young people are the, these topics are common for all of us and this is some energy that, that is um, pushing us and pushing the project on so yeah that's the IG of check here thank you very much Zina indeed bridging the standardization gap involves also bridging the gender gap and also the youth consideration our next generation so now let me turn over to speaking of youth Emilia who will understand, share with us uh, some uh, successful examples of women-to-men -men cooperation because gender equality concerns both genders. So, Emilia, over to you. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, as Charlene mentioned, it is very important uh, in designing uh, the women-oriented programs also not to forget that it is not only about uh, empowering empower maybe the other way empower empowering women uh, requires cooperation also the support from men because other way it wouldn't work like uh, it is empowering women is not about diminishing the role of men in the community but is to establishing equal relationships and also a bit about teaching how we can better cooperate with each other uh, considering differences for example in the ways how we were brought up as boys or girls uh, what differences we we had met in our life because of our gender so I think uh, it is very important to build these partnerships and to have this support not to only focus uh, on building women communities but also inviting men to be uh, in the role of Alice uh, in those uh, regarding the successful initiatives I think uh, I think ITU have a very uh, worth mentioning one uh, which is girl in ICT day it is a very special event during which uh, all 
together, the whole communities can celebrate the role of girls, the, war, uh, the role of women uh, in tech sector, uh, in ICT. And uh, there are a lot of events. Uh, and I also, uh, I always uh, really like the women uh, centered events because usually they have a very good energy. Uh, and uh, those connected with the girls in ICT days uh, are usually a very good ones. I have participated in some of them as a panelist or as just an, as an attendee. And I think it is a very good way to celebrate and to remember uh, about uh, that it is not only a problem that there is a gender gap, it is, of course, it is a problem, but also we should really celebrate what have been achieved so far. We should celebrate, celebrate women that are already there. And also, this is also a good way to celebrate and also at the same time to think about what still could be done. And uh, as Charlene mentioned, it is very important that those kind of events, like on the one hand, we've got women communities, women supporting each other. But on the other hand, we've got those events during which also men attend and they listen to women and listen to what could be uh, like, what is their point of view and how they can also participate in making this change because they are needed. Thank you, Emilia, and this is all in the spirit of inclusivity. So now let me go to the second round of questions. If I may ask my esteemed panelists to be a bit brief as time is ticking. So this second question to all of you is about highlighting the key challenges because uh, to be able to create change, it is important to identify first the challenges to be able to take uh, appropriate actions. And with that also, given your experience, share some recommendations, some personal insights to inspire other women and men to support women and amplify women voices in the tech industry. Thank you. So uh, Isabella, over to you. Thanks. Thanks, Charlene. Um, just a few words on the side of barriers. I think uh, the biggest problem is still insufficient awareness um, of the importance of gender equality issue. I think that there should be definitely more public discussion on that, starting from schools. And I remember that when participating in the WRC 23, I've heard an interview with Joanne Wilson, who is the deputy director of Radio Communication Bureau. And she mentioned this uh, IMT, um, the top American engineering university school program that she took part in. And it was a kind of a milestone for her career. And she also benefited from having a good teacher who, who understood that there's nothing gender specific about math and physics. Um, so I think that we need this kind of approach when teaching uh, young boys and girls. This is essential, I guess. Um, and on the recommendation side, uh, I would just say that we should just share our experiences, inspire each other, collect all this and as a second step to encourage the administrations to implement uh, programs that could build on that and then as a result make a difference um, at least what we are trying to do here today I guess thank you thank you very much Isabella so now I will turn to uh, Susanna for your insights on uh, the challenges barriers and also recommendations. Thank you. Well, I think really the the most the, the the biggest challenge is to be sustainable in the efforts to change um, the the situation in order to to bridge the gender divide. So we can't leave it to individuals to change the norms in society. We do have to cooperate. We have to be 
um, we have to have a majority of people, uh, both women and men. We need to start always saying women first and then men. <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, but I think we, we must work together really. Government, civil society, the industry, and so many other actors are needed to push the boundaries and make society more inclusive. And I think I will just uh, say something short about the um, the gender equality policy that the Swedish government has. And uh, the overarching ob objective is that we shall all have the same power to shape society and our lives. And I think this... Um, the holistic view about uh, gender uh, divide and bridging it, um, really it, it doesn't have only one thing or two things or three things. It's a holistic thing. And um, the Swedish um, government has six sub goals in its um, uh, strategy. It's uh, equal division of power and influence. It's economic equality. It's equal education. It's equal distribution of unpaid housework and provisional care. It's equal health. And it's uh, the goal that men's violence against women must stop. And if we don't have these all things in place, we can't have a situation. We can't really think that I as a person can really do something for my own good and reaching an uh, equal position in society. Thank you very much, Susanna. So pointing to the political will, and it's very indeed inspiring to hear Sweden's advancement uh, um, at the ministerial level, governmental level. Now, over to Ksenia, please. Uh, since my educational background is international relations um, and not in ICT and STEAM field, I will share today some challenges and personal experience and insights from our Minister of Digital Transformation, Dr. Emilia stoimenova duch uh, she is strongly committed to promoting gender equality and inspiring girls and women to lead in the tech industry. As such, she is strongly committed to increasing the number of young people studying engineering, especially women, who will later remain active in their sector and dare to take up leadership positions in science and engineering. As she shared, she started studying electrical engineering in 2004 and was the only woman among 150 prospective electrical engineers. And 14 years later, in year 2018, when she was at the graduation ceremony as a mentor of the male graduate engineer, she started to look around and started to count and counted and counted the number uh, of female mentor associates and counted the number of new female graduates. The task was very easy to her great grief. Among 44 mentors, there were just her and one other woman fellow associate. Among the 185 uh, new graduates, there were only 18 female graduates, new engineers. And although in the world of technologies, change is extremely rapid, and in the field of gender representation in technology, there is no substantial change, and where there are changes, they are very slow. She was one of 50 women in ICT leadership positions selected to participate in the project Hidden No More multi-regional project program funded by the US State Department for empowering women in STEM fields. And she shared that this project was an exceptional confirmation that changes in gender representation in technology and especially in leadership positions are happening very slowly everywhere around the world. Challenges that uh, and barriers that uh, all of these women who were participating in this uh, project identified were uh, the stereotypes and bias. Women often face stereotypes and bias that can discourage them from pursuing leadership positions uh, in the tech industry. And uh, also they encounter the glass ceiling. And that means that uh, prevents highly educated, capable and ambitious women from achieving the highest professional success at the international level, although they are equally trained as their male fellow associates. And of course, the imposter syndrome, that uh, is really big one, uh, although they are uh, really uh, highly educated and really capable. And uh, then they, they are all facing the work-life balance, balance between professional and private life. If they don't have the supporting uh, environment, it's very hard for them to succeed. Um, and of course, the lack of role, role models, like we mentioned uh, today uh, several times. Um, she also say that uh, she's also a great advocate for that. Um, 
that girls who pursue careers in the ICT should become role models for other girls, encouraging them to pursue STEAM education and careers. And as she, as she stated, if you see someone successful, who looks like you? She comes from a similar family and lives in a similar place to you. You think, if she can, so can I. And I would also like to uh, say some more. She also emphasizes emphasis, um, that it is also important that we know how to get our place at the top, but also make room for the successful women who deserves this place. And I will add my own personal advice for girls and young women in the ICT and in all leadership positions. Believe in yourself and your potential and support each other because empowered women empower other women and men and we rise together stronger and higher. Thank you. Thank you for this uh, powerful uh, statement. And it's also great to hear insights from Her Excellency. So now over to uh, Zina, please, uh, for your thoughts on the topic of challenges, barriers, and recommendations to inspire other women to lead. Uh, well, yes. Uh, when thinking about barriers and challenges in, in, in the Czech Republic, um, I think that a lot of uh, has been already done and there are no significant like um, physical or systemic barriers to um, to, uh, to to um, work uh, in technologies for women. But uh, there are still uh, only a few women in leadership and not only in technology, but also in state administration and everywhere. And, uh, it is uh, probably conditioned historically, socially, culturally, and it is something that is really hard to change. What we need to change is some thinking, and um, there are a lot of prejudices on both sides, on women's and on uh, men's also. So uh, what I think that what we have to do is to uh, educate, uh, especially young people, girls and young women and to concentrate there. Uh, there are many programs in the Czech Republic as well as in other countries mentioned here. Uh, and uh, I guess this is the way. And um, uh, I am pretty sure that uh, as, as technologies are penetrating our daily lives and not only uh, in physically, but also psychic, you know, um, the, Technology is uh, changing our interpersonal relationships. And I think their uh, diverse perspective, women perspective is uh, much more valued today and will be more and more. So that is the hope for us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you very much, Sina. Uh, so now, Emilia, would you please share with us from a youth perspective, what do you believe are the main challenges to having more young women joining into STEMs and what's your personal recommendation? Uh, yeah, thank you. I think uh, it's a very good question. Like what are the challenges? What are the barriers? What Zina mentioned there in most European countries, I think, or, or in all, there are no formal barriers for women uh, for women to reach out to the high uh, leadership positions or education in STEM. But something is happening. And I think uh, as we look on our history, like even at the beginning of the last century, women weren't rising up to be successful professionals. It was the opposite. And it is changing, but very slowly. And I think what was also already mentioned by Xenia, how women are brought up really contributes to the imposter syndrome or and also problems to own your own successes. Because uh, I have, I am lucky that I have a lot of intelligent women friends uh, also working in tech. And uh, when we talk about it, uh, we, we all observe that most of us has, have the same problem that we are modest, uh, we are humble to own our own successes, to talk about them and to actually have the courage to reach out for more. Uh, and I think uh, it starts with the education. Uh, it starts at home when uh, where women are 
uh, brought up in a different way than men are. And they have those problems that they are not competent enough. They have this inner critic voice that they are not capable of reaching out to the higher leadership positions because they don't have enough qualification. Even if they are super intelligent and super qualified, there's still something. This is this mental mindset that is really strongly built into our mentality because of how we were educated, uh, what many of us experienced at home. Uh, so that you have to be modest. You shouldn't brag about your successes. You should wait until you are seen. And it usually doesn't happen. So uh, what my advice would be, uh, other than to women to own your success and be loud about it, because, uh, because really you deserve it, uh, is also what was mentioned before, is building these supportive communities of women, uh, and not only women, just supportive communities in which you can talk to each other, how I can with my friends, and notice this, that we have this problem, that we have problem with owning our successes, with seeing that we are, for example, competent. Uh, I have a friend who I can ask, do you think I can apply for this uh, fellowship or something? And she can tell me, yeah, totally do that. And it really helps because sometimes I really feel not self-confident enough to do that because I think that I am just not qualified. Like, why should I? So I think that on a higher level, it also could work like that, that having these supportive communities really can help having mentors, especially women mentors who can, uh, who also experience those barriers, who know how to be a woman in a male dominated industry can really help because they also usually had to go through the same obstacles through the same barriers uh, which are specific for being a woman so yeah so so that's it thank you very much Emilia and as a matter of fact so just to uh, summarize your point building the confidence and I've noticed that here on this panel most of us have a piece of paper we may not need it, so we just need to build that confidence, and we count also on our on our male colleagues to help us and amplify women's voices. So, with that, we're coming to the end of this session, and I would like to give the opportunity for a question from the floor. Oh, here we are, and uh, maybe ask uh, my colleague if there's any question also from online. If we can pick one up, so Arno. Hope it works. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for the old session. Uh, there are two things I would like to share. The first one is the remark about youth. I think it's a really important point. I just want to share that uh, there is a next generation problem, and uh, there in RG IEM in TSAG, we had the surprise to see a first proposal for a new resolution on next generation. So you are all part of ITU. I would strongly recommend that if you could participate to the elaboration or critique or improvement of this uh, uh, potential resolution, but there is a resolution about it. The second, I think out of all the uh, 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 sharing, uh, the one who spoke the most to me was uh, Emilia. And the more I was listening, the more I was telling myself, it's not just a woman problem. I could tell you how I've, I've been exactly through all of what you said, the imposter syndrome, especially in cybersecurity, how much intimidation you got from other mates, uh, from other people, uh, and the difficulty to find a mentor that would be kind enough to help you understand how to become an executive advisor or an executive person. And it was just by luck. So uh, wondering if this is really women specific, but very happy to share and, and, and at minimum help ourselves just to that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Emilia, would you like to react? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, and uh, yeah, I completely agree with you that it is not a 
women only problem because uh, what I said I think is that women are sensitive to that because they have also these other factors that also uh, influences them and uh, for example being the only woman in a room uh, but for sure yeah I agree and I think it is a problem of all young professionals uh, maybe not all but many young professionals that they really without a mentor or without a, at least a supportive person that can introduce them they can show them around they can explain them what can be the next steps uh, it might be very challenging especially in the environments uh, that is dominated by the senior professionals so i think that uh, mentoring programs are you know even at least looking around and trying to find this shy person somewhere in the room who is young and or maybe not even young but they just don't know they seem like they don't really feel confident in this place and reaching to, out to them and just saying hey I can show you around I think it can be really helpful thank you very much uh, for the question and Emilia for your answer with that we're coming to an end and just as a word of conclusion just uh, would like to summarize a little bit what we discussed and gender equality is very much leading is uh, the, the ambition is to lead to more effective solutions and this is particularly important in the domain of uh, technology and standardization and uh, our uh, esteemed panelists here shared a lot of insights that we will uh, put together in a little outcome uh, document uh, that we will post on our website. So I would like to invite you to give a very warm round of applause to our panelists here. And uh, also to uh, join the network of women there's a network of women night UT here. So you have the, the website. You can subscribe to our mailing list to get updated on uh, our upcoming activities and uh, also calling all to you to uh, support our gender equality objectives for WTSA. Uh, to that end, uh, I will hand over to um, our host, kind host, Poland for some words of conclusion. Thank you. Can I add some, something? Um, speaking of network of women in uh, the tea sector, we, uh, I think some of you know that we don't have a regional representative uh, in this uh, network. Ideally, this, this would have to be someone who is coming to WTSA. So I am uh, expecting uh, any candidatures from uh, the CEPT side on this. So we need a regional representative in the network of women for ITUT uh, as soon as possible. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Other regions have appointed their regional representatives. So I invite CPT to inform GSB director as soon as possible on the decision. <laughs> okay. TSB director, any word of conclusion to uh, to mark the end of uh, this morning? Yeah, uh, thank thank you for the um, fruitful discussions. Uh, remember, uh, we have set a, a target goal at the WTC, thirty five percent of women's participation. Please encourage. Uh, I if I uh, expect a lot of uh, women from Europe. Thank you. Thank you, Onoe-san. Indeed, 35% is our target for female participation at WTSA as opposed to 32 at WTSA 20. So we count on your support.